Tonight, um, we're looking at eating well on a budget. And we're joined by two experts in nutrition from London's much-loved HIV support service, the Food Chain, Ornella Trinidad, Associate Nutritionist, and Dietitian Luke White, who are here to tell us how we can eat well for less and promote our own good health through our diet to feel better and live better. Ornella, Luke, it's great to have you with us. Good evening, guys. Thank you so much, Greg. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, I know you've got a slide presentation for us and we're all really looking forward to seeing what you've got for us but if, oh, no, if I can start with you can you tell us a little bit for those of us that don't know about the food chain and the amazing work that you do can you tell us a bit about your remit and um, your, your role within the food chain? Um, yeah, thanks, Greg. Um, I, at the food chain I work as a dietetic support team leader um, and um, if you are aren't aware of the food chain, we are a nutrition and HIV charity that provides um, nutritional support for people living with HIV in London. Mm -hmm. So we provide uh, grocery deliveries and meal deliveries and also uh, cooking, uh, nutrition and cooking classes and communal eating uh, opportunities as well. Right, so, so why, why is it important then for people like HIV positive to look more, more stringently at the, the diet? Um, well, it's mostly for health, uh, a lot of health reasons, um, which I will go more into in the presentation as well, but you need food in order to take a medication, but also nutrition is very important when it comes to reducing risk of chronic diseases such as type 2 diabetes, um, cardiovascular disease and osteoporosis that uh, people living with HIV can have an increased risk of due to the amount of inflammation in their body. Um, and also in order to manage any gastrointestinal symptoms that might come through uh, due to the uh, medication that they are taking. So it's also good to manage that through diet. Great. So um, if you're ready to go, I'd love to hear what you've got for us. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. Greg. I'm just going to share my screen now. Brilliant. Hi everyone, um, as Greg mentioned, we're going to talk about healthy eating on a budget. Um, just a quick introduction, as we already mentioned, uh, my name is Anela Trinidad, I'm a registered associate nutritionist, and Luke is uh, here as well to support, uh, and he's the uh, registered dietitian and a full-time dietitian at the food chain. Um, as I mentioned, my background already. Uh, but um, again, just to elaborate, uh, the food chain exists to ensure people living with HIV in London uh, can access nutrition they need to get well, stay well, and lead a healthy and independent lives. Um, we offer meals and groceries, um, deliveries to service users, um, and also uh, offer cooking and nutrition classes and communal eating opportunities. Due to the current circumstances, uh, the cooking classes and the communal meals have been put on hold, but we hope to reopen these services uh, in the near future. Um, and as I mentioned again, it's very important to eat healthy, especially when you're living with HIV, um, especially due to medication. So you need to have food in order to support medication adherence. So for that medication to be effective and reduce any symptoms, nutrition is very important. Um, overall to support your immune system, to maintain a healthy body weight. So if you are overweight or underweight, it's really important to get to a healthy body weight as well, and nutrition can be important for that. And overall to reduce any risk of chronic diseases, like I mentioned before, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and osteoporosis. Uh, good nutrition is also good for mental health and mood. So having oily fish that is high in omega-3 is important. Uh, regular intakes of carbohydrates and whole grain, um, sorry, whole grain carbohydrates and protein, and also fruit and vegetable is important for your mood. And as I mentioned earlier, it's important for gastro to manage any gastrointestinal symptoms as well. So for example, take diarrhea and constipation. So <laughs> having having insoluble fibers for constipation and soluble fibers to manage diarrhea. So now that we know why it's important to eat healthy, what, how can we achieve a healthy balanced diet? Well, the current recommendations are to follow an eat well guide. Um, and I have a little video exp best explaining the eat well guide that I would like to share with you now. Please let me know if you can't hear this, okay? 
Hi, my name is Anala Trinidad. Uh, I'm a Dietetic Support Team Leader uh, uh, and today I'm going to demonstrate the Eat Well Guide. So the Eat Well Guide represents a balanced, healthy diet. It doesn't represent a meal, but rather than the food that you eat throughout the day and throughout the week. So uh, the Eat Well Guide is divided into five sections. So we have the uh, carbohydrates, we have the oils, we have the dairy, protein and fruit and veg. We also have foods that we should consume less of and we also have the drinks. So we'll go through uh, all the food and uh, we'll fill out the Eat Well Guide and show you uh, which kind of foods does it represent. Okay, so we'll start off with dairy and alternatives. So for dairy, that will be considered something like uh, milk, um, cheese and we also have some yogurt. Now dairy can be high in calories because it's quite high in fat. So you can always opt out go for the low fat options. So something like semi skimmed milk, low fat cheese and um, low fat plain like Greek style yogurt. Um, if you are following a vegan diet, you can also go for something like a plant based um, drink. So something like an almond drink. Um, uh, oat, soy drink, but make sure that it's fortified with calcium so you don't miss out on the important nutrients. And the next one is the oils and spreads. So for oils and spreads, you're thinking about butter um, and that are high in saturated fats. But to have something more healthier, you can always go for something like olive oil or vegetable oil uh, and something like olive spread. These fats are called monounsaturated fatty acids, which tend to be healthy fats. So you always want to go for these options instead. Now we'll go for the carbohydrate section. So the carbohydrates should make the base of your meal. So we're thinking about something like pasta, something like bread, potatoes, rice. It can also be mashed potatoes um, and some cereal. So you always want to go for the brown versions which are called the whole grain or whole meal options. These um, carbohydrates have um, more nutrients than the white uh, options um, such as white bread or white pasta or white rice uh, and they have more fiber so always opt for the, the brown rice, brown pasta, brown bread options. Um, and then next we have fruit and veg. So notice over here for potatoes, I haven't added that in the fruit and veg section. That's because potato doesn't count towards the five fruit and veg portion. So instead you want to opt out for something like sweet potato. So sweet potato has a lot more nutrients than potatoes and it counts towards your five a day. So you can always choose that over normal potatoes. Um, so let's uh, add some more fruits and veg over here as well. So we can add something like um, let's say beetroot as vegetables, you also have some green beans, carrots, um, cauliflower, you can also go for some green peas, um, but you can also choose something like frozen uh, green peas or frozen vegetable. Uh, or if you don't have space in the freezer, you can go for something like tinned beans and tinned sweet corn. So for the five a day, you want to consume three portions of vegetable and two portions of um, fruits every single day. So fruits can be like a handful of grapes, banana, some clementines, um, oh, that's tomato that would still count as a, as a vegetable, um, something like watermelon um, and um, berries. And we also have lemon over here we can use for dressing and things like that. Um, and if you want to go for tinned fruits as well, you can always go for that because the fresh ones don't last that long. But when you're thinking about having tinned fruits, make sure you go for the option where the fruits are in fruit juice rather than syrup because syrup can be quite high in sugar and you want to avoid that. So if you go for tinned fruits, make sure they are in fruit juices instead of syrup. And the last one is our protein section here. So for protein, you're thinking about something like uh, chicken, fish, some, some beef, um, some eggs as well. Um, and um, and you have some tin tuna and sardines as well. So uh, that represents some of the protein items. Um, but um, it's also recommended that you have two portions of um, fish every single week. And one of the portions should be an oily fish. So something like sardines or mackerel is a good idea as well. Um, now, if you're not 
um, if you're following a plant-based diet, you can also uh, have um, like tofu as an option as a substitute for protein and beans uh, and lentils are also a good idea because they're quite high in fiber and nutrients and a handful of nuts as well, they make up your protein source. Now the things to have less of that would include something like a burger, so like try and avoid uh, fast food joints if possible, or uh, if you want to, you can have less of these. So something like a burger, um, condiments as well, because they're quite high in um, calories because of the amount of sugar and amount of fat they add into it. You also have like bakery goods like um, donuts, like cakes, uh, ice cream. Um, cold cof uh, coffees as well, especially the ones that you get in um, uh, in fast food joints because they tend to have a lot of sugar and a lot of fat and biscuits as well. In this section of the Eat Well Guide, you want to try and have less of. And the final section is your drinks. So you want to try and aim for um, six to eight uh, glasses a drink per day. This can include water, but also have some fruit juice and on tea or coffee. So for tea and coffee, you want to make sure uh, that you only, you do not consume any tea or coffee after afternoon time, uh, as uh, the caffeine in the drink can affect your sleeping habits. Um, so to avoid that, you can have some tea or coffee, just make sure you have it before uh, and limit the amount of sugar you add into that as well. Uh, you can also have like fruit juices or smoothies, but make sure you have only 150 milliliters of uh, fruit juices or smoothies because they can have a lot of refined sugar in them and you want to try and limit those out. And yeah, so that represents the Eat Well Guide and the Eat Well Guide is not based on a meal rather than the food that you should have over a day and over a week. Thank you. Mama. <laughs> Thank Great. you. Great. <laughs> uh, just go back to the presentation. So now that we know uh, what constitutes an eat well guide and what foods we should have, it's also important to know the portion size. So healthy eating is not just about what you eat, but how much you eat. So portion size is really important. And the best way to know how much to eat is to use hand guides to know single portions of different fruits. Um, and you always have your hands with you. You know, you don't have to worry about getting a scale or measuring out your food. So uh, for example, um, meat and beans would be like on the inner palm, carbohydrates is just on the outside. Uh, fish and chicken would count as your whole hand. Fruits is one palm fruit and vegetable is two palmfuls. Um, butter would be the tip of the index finger and cheese would be two fingers length. So that gives you a guide of the portion sizes, portion of the food to have per servings during your meals. Um, and also you should consume a variety of fruits from different food, group, food, food groups every day to make sure you're getting all the nutrients you need. So you must have heard people mentioning that you have to have a rainbow of fruits and vegetables. So in doing so, you're having uh, foods from different, you're having different fruits and vegetables, you're getting different nutrients you need to out throughout the day. But this doesn't just apply for fruits and vegetables, this applies for your carbohydrates, your fats and your proteins as well. So for all food groups. Um, now that we know why it's important to eat healthy uh, and what uh, is, uh, constitutes healthy eating, can we eat healthy and save money? Well, there's a misconception out there that healthy food is expensive. That's because currently it's marketed in such a way that you have to have the most expensive, the most organic. You have to shop at Whole Foods in order to get the healthiest products there. However, that is simply not true. Healthy food doesn't have to cost more. And today we will talk about 12 tips and show you how it's possible to buy and eat healthy and also save money. So we'll start off with tip number one. Tip number one is plan, uh, plan the week. So um, at the beginning of the week, it's really important to get organized and plan out what you're going to eat throughout the week. So your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You don't have to have a complete plan, even if it's a rough guide, just to get a general idea of how you're going to, what you're going to eat throughout the week. Once you've done that, then you have to check your uh uh, kitchen for your cupboard, your fridge and the freezer to see what ingredients you already have. So if you're organized in the kitchen um, and you go through your kitchen, see what you have, you don't need to buy extra 
than you already need. So everything will be, the things that you don't need to buy will, will be in the kitchen. So that will save you money because you're not buying extra and will save you the amount of food waste as well. So once you've planned your week, checked your kitchen uh, for the ingredients you already have, then you can make your shopping list. And it's very important that once you make your shopping list, you have to stick to that shopping list. So don't buy anything that's not on that list. So here's just an example of the plan of the week. So you have from Monday to Sunday, I know what I'm going to have for my breakfast, lunch and dinner. And I also have a few snack options as well in case I get hungry in between. So once I've done my plan, I am going to make a shopping list. And the way I've organized my shopping list is by the food groups in the Eat Well Guide. So this ensures that I have a balanced diet because I have every most of the um, I get every single food from a different food group. So I have a balanced healthy diet throughout the week. So here we can see there's a dairy section, there's a fats and oils, protein, carbohydrates, vegetable and fruits. So once uh, I have my, uh, I've organized myself, I have my list, I go out shopping. However, if I'm hungry, I'm very likely um, very unlikely to stick to that shopping list. Your body's natural response to hunger or your, an evolutionary response to hunger is to pick foods that are high in sugar and fat. And you're more likely to pick things like biscuits and donuts and crisps and end up with an unhealthy basket like this, rather than sticking to that healthy list that you've made at the beginning of the week. So in order to avoid uh, impulse buying, especially when you're hungry and shopping, make sure you have a nice meal before you go out shopping so you're completely full. Or you can carry some snacks as well. So if you get hungry in between shoppings, you have the snacks already with you. So tip number three is choose supermarket owned brands. Um, so swap brands for branded items for supermarket owned labels, especially for like a pasta, rice and tinned items. Just because a brand has marketed it itself really well and done a lovely advert and has a nice picture on the package doesn't mean that the product is better than the supermarket owned. You're actually more likely to pay for that picture on the package rather than the product. So you're going to be paying extra. Um, and definitely look out for the ingredients and the nutritional value to compare the branded versus the supermarket owned item. It's more likely that the branded item can be a bit higher in sugar and fat because it it wants to taste really great and wants the customers to keep on buying it. So when you think about it nutritionally, um, have a look at the supermarket labeled owned items as well, because they might be no more nutritionally be beneficial. Um, and also um, some supermarkets offer own brand items and um, unknown brand items that can be actually cheaper than the supermarket own brand items. They are a better value and they taste as great as the, as the branded items as well. So if you are physically shopping in store, some of the branded goods and the more expensive goods are kept on the uh, the top shelves or the middle shelves because our eyes naturally go through, go fall on them. Uh, so it's just a matter of bending down and the supermarket owned items are mostly on the lower shelves. So it's just look out for those as well. So here's an example. So we have um, Barilla spaghetti and versus Tesco spaghetti. So if you buy a, a branded item, you're going to pay one pound 20 pence for 500 grams of spaghetti. Whereas if you get the supermarket owned, you're only paying 55 wow. pence. So you're saving so much by just swapping over to a supermarket owned label. Step number four, do not dismiss tinned items. So um, tinned items, um, the process is just adding a little bit. Um, the process of is, is preserving the food. So there's very little added to it. So you're not losing any nutritional value when you're getting the tinned items. It's as good as the fresh items itself. Um, just and it keeps longer as well in your cupboards. Um, just keep in mind though, when you're buying tinned items, especially for vegetables, you're buying the ones in water rather than salt water because you don't want to increase the intake of salt because that can have an effect on your blood pressure and could have a, a increased risk of cardiovascular disease. So um, definitely look out for the ones in water. That also applies for tuna. So if um, 
go for tuna in spring water rather than brine because brine has a lot of salt um, and for tin fruits go for the ones in juice rather than syrup because syrup again has a lot of sugar in it and you don't want to uh, raise your blood sugar levels by having to consuming too much sugar than you should um, also tinned beans count as a five a day so five a day you have to have at least five portions of fruit and vegetable per day and tinned items accounts to tinned beans counts towards them because you have a lot of fiber in them um, and also um, tinned fish is really good source of um, they have a tons of nutrients in them really good source of protein calcium vitamin d and omega-3 um, so tinned fish like sardines mackerel is good as well um, salmon and pelchard as well and tin items are really good because you can always stock them in the cupboard and you once you run out of fresh items you can go for the tinned items tip number five buy frozen so frozen items are really good as well because you can keep them in the freezer and they last a long time so if you run out of a fresh fruit and veg you can have frozen fruit and veg in the freezer so that stops you from going to the shops again and again and that will eventually save your money because you're not shopping all the time so always you can use them as standby meals um, and the process of freezing the items as well so frozen items um, <laughs> so, uh, you can um, once the items are packaged they are frozen so quickly that they you do not lose any nutritious nutritional uh, content in there so it's as good as the fresh produce um, and also for frozen items they keep longer as well sometimes um, just check the packaging but sometimes you, you can keep items for for a month or more than six to 12 months. So definitely check out the packaging and see how long you can keep this in your freezer. Tip number six, try less meat. So uh, plant proteins like uh, beans um, and lentils, uh, beans and pulses are cheaper than meat and fish and they're a good source of protein and also have dietary fiber in them. So going for something like how this picture shows, um, pincher beans, lentils, mung beans, um, green spit split peas or green lentils, uh, kidney beans or soy beans is a good option. And you can substitute some of the um, items, uh, some of the beans with meat in your dishes like stews and casseroles. So you can uh, spread out the packet of meat a bit longer. So for example, if you're making a chili, um, you can use, um, instead of using one pack of minced beef, you can only use half a pack and you can add more kidney beans to bulk up the quantity. But then you can use that half a pack of uh, minced beef for some other thing. So you can make um, meals the meat um, lasts a bit longer if you stretch it out and um, add more beans to, to increase the quantity of meals. Um, also nuts and seeds are really good for stews and salads um, and uh, eggs is a very cheap and highly nutritious protein source as well so not just for breakfast you can have it for lunch as an egg salad or um, as dinner you can make like a nice egg curry as well so it's a good protein option as well. Uh, tip number seven is to um, world food. So uh, check out your local area to see what kind of international shops they have. So most international shops, they sell spices and specialized ingredients that would otherwise be expensive um, in, uh, in the supermarkets. So do look at the area, see what kind of shops are available to you as well. Um, and they tend to offer a, a best value of regional uh, fruits and vegetables. So some things that you won't find in the supermarket, you're more likely to find in these stores. And staples like rice and maize, um, you'll find there as well. But also you'll be able to bulk buy over there and they'll have a better value for these uh, produce. Um, and because these uh, shops are quite local, they tend to be very competitive amongst themselves. So they're more likely to offer some competitive price as well. So they'll have deals around those. Um, so yeah, look at your local area, see what kind of shops are there and see what values they offer as well. And you can compare between supermarkets and the local shops to see which is the best value, value for yourself. 
Tip number eight uh, is uh, choose a cheaper cut of meat and fish. So don't be afraid to ask your local butchers or fishmongers for um, off cuts of trimmings, which you can use for your food. They tend to be a bit cheaper as they tend to be cheaper. Um, also braising steak and shin of beef. Um, they are less popular cuts and therefore cheaper, but however, they are full of flavor and it needs slow cooking. So if you're planning to make a stew or casserole, um, you can always choose these options. Um, and uh, supermarkets also have off cuts of salmon, uh, which is cheaper and as good as the fillet. So you don't have to always go for the fillets. They, you can have a look to see if you have any off cut pieces as well. Um, and also when you do uh, shop from a fishmonger's or a butcher's, you're ex asking for the exact amount that you need for your cooking. So you're not creating additional waste as well. Um, and another alternative to chicken um, is turkey. Turkey is very lean um, and cheaper than chicken as well. So another good source of protein um, if you don't want to get uh, chicken. And tip number nine is uh, bulk buy with friends. So you must see in supermarkets, they have these offers like buy one, get one free or buy four for a price of one or like different multi-buy options. However, if you do not have space in your kitchen to store these items or if their item is going to expire before you use them, this foods might be wasted. However, the way to take advantage of these offers is to shop with a friend. So you are able to buy the item, split the cost and save money and also reduce the amount of waste. And it might be just a nice thing to go out shopping with your friend once in a while. Tip number 10, get cooking. So it's far cheaper to cook at home rather than getting ready meals and takeaways like pizzas and uh, curries. Um, so cooking at home will just cost you like um, pizza bases, for example, they only cost a fraction uh, compared to the takeaways or stove boards. Um, and also when you're cooking at home, you're more likely to make something more nutritious than the ready meals or takeaways because you know what ingredients you're adding and you can control the amount of salt, sugar or fats in your cooking as well so definitely you know start um if you're not already maybe try and get used to the idea of cooking and making easy meals at home um another thing to avoid is buying already chopped up fruit and veg um, so if they if the supermarket or the brand has to pay somebody to cut the fruit and veg, they will add a labor cost onto the products. So it's tend to be more expensive. So if you're able to do it at home, I would suggest doing it at home and you can chop fruit and veg at home uh, without uh, and save money. Um, that also goes for grated cheese, for example. So the um, the price of grated cheese per grams uh, is uh, per, per kilograms is more expensive than a block of cheese. So if you buy an already grated bag of cheese, um, or it's going to be more expensive. So if you get a block of cheese and grate it yourself, you're saving yourself two pounds, um, and you're getting a bigger quantity as well. Um, quantity as well. Uh, so if you are able to do it at home, I would suggest you know it's you will save money wow. if you do it at home as well. Uh, tip number 11, shop during happy hour. So uh, supermarkets during at the end of the day, mostly they reduce any fresh items. Um, so you can phone up your local uh, supermarket or shop to find out what times they start reducing the prices and look out for these yellow stickers right here. They'll always say reduce, but just make sure it hasn't passed the expiry date if you do buy it. So I used to actually work in Sainsbury's previously. Um, and one of my roles was to reduce the prices. So the way we did it um, when I used to work there is um, the day before an item was to expire, we would reduce it to 25% off. Um, and on the day when the item was to expire, um, I would say during 11 to 12 in the afternoon, we would reduce it to half price. And then at the end of the day, especially during rush hour, when uh, people are going home, you, you have more food traffic um, around five to six, we would reduce it to 75%. So that would be the, the highest reduction made during that time. 
Um, and this might really vary for different stores. Uh, so definitely call up your local supermarket to check what times and how they do the process as well. Um, and also it's good to know the difference between uh, best before and use by date. So if a label says best before, it means that if the product passes the date, it does, it's still safe to consume, but it just loses quality. So the quality is lost, but you can still eat it. It hasn't expired. It's not going to be pro not, not going to have any problems. Uh, so best before is mostly referred to like fruit and vegetable, uh, plant-based plant -based foods mostly, um, but also for uh, cupboard uh, items like uh, rice or pasta, anything in tinned items or dried dried beans or pulses. So they will have the best before label. So just check that out to see what it says. However, if it says use by date, it means that you have to use by the date that it suggests. So if you keep it for any longer than that, it's no longer safe to consume. So if you do buy anything that's reduced and it says use by date is that day, just make sure you have it by that evening. Because if you leave it past that, you can increase the risk of food poisoning. Uh, and the use by date mostly goes for, um, is added to animal produce, so like uh, meat or fish or even dairy products as well. Um, and yeah, just... Um, I just made a note saying if you do see an item that is approaching its sell by date or is reaching the best before date or the use by date um, is going to be on the day or the next day, you can ask the staff if they're going to reduce the item. Um, and yeah, just be polite. And uh, if they are going to reduce the item, ask them if they be able to do that for you. Most of the time they are able to do that. So yeah, definitely check with the staff as well. And our last tip for the day is buy seasonal fruit and veg. So it's cheaper to buy fruit and veg when they are in season because if they are not in season, they have to be flown from a different from flown in from a different country that they are grown that they can still be grown in so that cost of travel and storage is then added to the produce uh, and they tend to be more expensive um, and also it has an impact on the environment. Um, so why choose first uh, seasonal produce again because it's high um, vitamin you're getting the nutrients and vitamins it's cheaper it is tastier and it's better for the environment and where can you find these um, so in your local market of course they tend to have seasonal produce especially farmers markets to so check those out um, in the supermarkets you will find them as long as you know what produce are in season um, and of course, if you have space, uh, you can always grow your own. If you do not have space, you can join a local community garden as well. Um, so for example, about seasonal fruits. So cherries, for example, are, are expensive because they have a short season. So you can always opt out for frozen cherries instead uh, because they are a better value all year around. Or on the other hand, uh, carrots and potatoes have a short season as well. However, because they're so mass produced, they have a good value all year around. So, and how do you know um, what's in season? Well, we have made a nice chart for you here. So whenever you do go out shopping next to the supermarket or in your local area, you can have a look at the chart to see what's in season because they will tend to be more cheaper than the other fruit and veg. And we're coming to the end. Um, and here we have a few resources here as well. There's a supermarket comparison. Websites are really good to use, especially if you're looking at a branded item. You can compare the deals that the supermarkets are offering at the moment and see where it's the best place to shop. Um, we also have some budget recipe um, websites. So Tesco does a really good uh, cheap meal idea. So go for the healthy version. Uh, and uh, it's great if you're shopping online because uh, it allows you to add ingredients to your basket directly. Um, and also BBC has a really good option for a one pound per serving uh, dinners, recipes. Um, so if you are thinking of reducing the amount of ready meals and takeaways, you can always start cooking and that's a good step, um, good, good place to start. Uh, and yeah, um, 
so once so now that we finished the presentation what is one thing you would do differently you, um so are you going to start uh swapping your fresh for frozen are you going to have more plant-based protein are you going to start cooking more instead of ordering ready meals or takeaways are you going to choose to supermarket on brand uh, items or are you going to uh, plan out your meal and make a shopping list and stop impulse buying or all of the above if you if you're feeling confident <laughs>